actions, conversations, all of this, this thing, because when you really think about these narratives, even no disrespect um, to people on social media, there's a lot of great influencers who speak in their truth and you see. Mm -hmm. You see it in their work, you see it in their action. Things are consistent, like, okay, this must be who you truly are. Yeah. But then you also see people like re relationship uh, coaches who are yelling. Yeah. <laughs> like, why are you yelling? <laughs> But yelling and just the tone and just saying all these things, but they cheating on the wife. Yep. Like oh, Gary Jackson thing. That was yep. wild. And he's still talking. I don't know. He's he's got, not. He still got a massive he's still, following. He's still making videos. Still talking. I'm, I'm a form of it. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm a form of it. You know what? I, I pray that the Lord is, is guiding him on what on the right things to do and, and what he's using his platform is for positive. Because people can change. People can really change. You just go to what you gravitate to. Not but I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> I, I hear both sides of the like, I tell you, I tell you. Oh, you know, maybe, you never know. Um, but just really limit distractions. If it's a conversation that doesn't feel good to you, don't entertain it. Yes, if it's somebody that you aren't sure about, don't date them. Don't date them. That's what's wrong. Dating is really not hard. It's not. It's not. What's hard is potential. Yeah. Potential is a false reality that you are projecting onto somebody else, but you want them to be, yep. but that's not truly them. Their actions is who they truly are. And that's what's wrong when it comes to dating. But you have it all starts with you have to know who you are. Because yep. you're a mirror, a reflection to what you attract. And that's a tough reality, yeah. especially going back in the day. Big yeah. Mama them stayed. Yeah. If they didn't have no job or couldn't work, they stayed. Yeah. Had an outside family across the street, around the corner, next town. Like that was like common. But that doesn't work now because we ain't going. <laughs> we make our own coins. We make our own coins. You got to match. You. Mm -mm, I, I don't do broke men. <laughs> You got to come, but you that all you have to know your standards. It all goes back to your standards, ladies. Thank you. Oh, okay. I just want to come over here and say I put my foot in this lemonade. Yes, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And um, also <laughs> that Kimmy over here is gifting y'all free infused homemade Ooh. ice cream. Ooh. So make sure you take advantage because y'all know we love free. Yes, I say. Y'all know we you. love free. Thank you, Kimmy. And the next question. Look at them. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, smoke coming out. <laughs> <laughs> but the next question is specifically for Jess. Uh, what is the best way to release trauma that has been stored in the psyche? From childhood. So we know we talked about trauma stored in the world. But what about that psyche? Oh, I love this. You know, it all goes back to identifying your problem. Accountability. It takes a big person to say, you know what, I'm the problem. I'm never forget my moment. I was 32. And I was like, yep. I'm the toxic one in this relationship. <laughs> yep, it's me. It, yep, yep, it's me. And it was so uncomfortable. And I remember I was in my office and my coworkers all the way. I'm just crying. And she's just like this. Are you done? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'm emotional too. I'm emotional too. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you, Virgos were... We be crying and stuff. Virgo <laughs> Nation. And I felt it. I felt y'all. I felt the energy. But you have to be ready to take those steps. Because addressing the psyche, it does come with some goodbyes. It comes yes. with positioning people. Not being afraid to let go. Because when you are rebirthing, think about this. The spring. You plant seeds because you're going to constantly blossom throughout the season. But it starts with you have to be kind. 
I always like to start with grace and gratitude with people. Because if I say, hey, start meditating for 10 minutes, you'll be like, Jessica, my thoughts are one. No, that's not going to be realistic. But if I say, say three things each day that you are grateful for. Okay. You say it one day, you keep doing it. It's really going to call, uh, start you to start to go to the core of who you are. Not what other people want you to be, not what people want you to do or people pleasing, but starting to be kind to yourself because you have to believe it to face the fear and the doubts. Doubt can really hold a person back. Yes. Because that fear, it grows. But think about it this way what are you losing becoming the best version of yourself? Yes. Boundaries. Boundaries. So definitely starting with grace and gratitude to believe yourself to start the foundation. I don't do quick fixes with people. I tell anybody that won't work with me. I don't do band-aids because band-aids keep people stuck. But to really get to the core of an individual, if you are being negative to yourself, what somebody's telling you, you're not going to believe in until you believe it yourself. So start with being kind to yourself. That's going to challenge negative thought patterns and also negative behaviors to create new ones in that foundation. I'm going to answer that one myself. Can I take it back just a little bit? Um, also, I want, so as far as trauma being, being trapped in the psyche, it's, again, because everything is energy. Yeah. So the trauma in the psyche is energy that has been, um, that's been trapped, right? So the one thing that I learned in my years in therapy, because <clears throat> your girl had some work to do, okay? The one, th <laughs> the one thing, the, the most valuable tool that I learned is, especially if you surf, suffer with anxiety, because the bottom line is, at the anxiety just simply means that you're stuck in the loop of being too far in the future. And then, then, and then depression is you're stuck in the loop of being too far in the past. If you stay present, then you understand that at this moment I'm safe. Nothing's happening to me. There's no active threat. The only threat is is in the in the subconscious. So the one thing, the a very valuable tool that I was taught was to let the scenario play out in your head, like because that's where it all happens anyway. And 99 of the shit that we 99 percent of the shit that we stress about, it never comes to fruition. We just torture ourselves with it. You know what I'm saying? So the one, the two that I was taught was, okay, if you have a thought that's making you anxious, nine times out of 10 is making you anxious because you're anticipating a poor outcome. We never anticipate good outcomes. Yes. We never say, oh, you know what? This shit's gonna be good. We just automatically say, but what if, you know, but who if, but maybe we won't have to do that. So let it play out. If it's a poor outcome that you're anticipating, let that outcome play all the way out to the end. Worst case scenario, what happens? in your head and then what my own personal example i had to do the same thing a few months ago i've been waiting on my husband to sign divorce papers he wouldn't do it so in my head the thing that was making me anxious is he's gonna try and get some money off the sale of my house now mind you i bought my house in 2015 i've only been married since 2021 all right so i let it play out i let it play all the way out in my head he says he wants money then what and you know what happened it actually happened. And when he came and said that he wanted money from the sale of the house, I said, state your terms. <laughs> because 25K is a small price to pay for my freedom. Really? Okay, for my peace of mind. So I'm cool with that. Luckily, his arrogance caused him to do something to, well, you ain't getting shit now. You know what I'm saying? But I was willing to accommodate at the time. But what I'm saying is the reason why I was able to handle it is because I let it play out. Three weeks before he came to me, I had already said, okay, so if he say he want money, then what? And I let it play out in my head. I had a whole scene. We do the shit anyway. We create scenarios all day long. So just create the scenario, process the feelings, give yourself, and the reason why you do it is because you give yourself time to prepare. The mo Most of the times, the reasons why we wig the fuck out and tweak out when something happens is because you've been blindsided. But there is no such thing as being blindsided when you're in tune with yourself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just have so just something quick that everybody can do. When you catch yourself, because anxiety is just common for all of us. There's going to be times that you're anxious. But 
to address it, you can ask yourself three questions. What am I thinking? What am I feeling? And what is the next best step for me to yeah. take? Because anxiety is really, thank you, it's really us versus ourselves. Yes, that's it. It is. It's nobody and else. Anybody, a planner, people that are planners. I'm a planner. When I think about a planner, we love a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we love to be organized. But sometimes the plans don't turn out to what we expect and then we be in our theory and all these other all these other scenarios. But catch that, challenge that. Because even when you take your time, things can still get done at the end of the day. It all goes back to prioritizing what you need each day. Give yourself one percent each day to be better. Yep. Because everybody doesn't wake up super jolly and happy. <laughs> Some people may need, won't wake up till 11 o'clock after they need their coffee. You just yep. never know. We all are just different. That's fine. But paying attention to what you need each day to <laughs> <Right>. really <laughs> start to learn to be in tune. And then shake. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, that was lovely. Thank you for sharing that. So, um, actually, what I wanted to say was kind of reminiscent to, to what y'all said. Um, well, first, I wanted to piggyback off of a tool, uh, what Machina was talking about when she said that a lot of times we're either too in the future or too in the past. So, that is actually a practice that I use myself on a regular, um, when I feel myself in an anxious state, I, I stop and I breathe because a lot of times we be breathing but we don't be breathing <laughs> like we just be breathing on autopilot mm -hmm. but we don't actually take the time and stop and breathe and like pay attention to our surroundings yeah. and what's going on and I always recommend especially like my students and my clients like that's something that we're all struggling with. like it seems like we're all in a hurry to get nowhere yes and I always tell them to like when you feel that way just stop and then remind yourself that you are safe in this yes. moment. You, you look around, nothing's going on, everything's cool, you're safe. Um, but also, so with the whole, like the, the scenario thing, I've come to realize that like, depending on where your energy, you can create a, a scenario that you don't want. Yep. You can create an outcome that you don't want by worrying. And so, with that practice of stopping and taking the time to breathe in that within that you can also redirect your thoughts yeah. to bring out a better outcome yeah. because some things are predestined and some things are fate so one of those things you actually have the power to you know bring that into fruition for yourself depending on where your mind is so if you say shit's going to be fucked up guess what nine times out of ten you're probably going to fuck it up yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're probably going to because you're putting that energy out there exactly now sometimes the universe can surprise you and shake it up and that's like yo hey don't do this you no know, more right. i told you <laughs> about that <laughs> so yeah there you go y'all kill this shit. um i wanted to kind of add to that conversation on uh releasing the trauma from the psyche from the childhood because I feel like that's an area of expertise that from my own experience and my offerings with Turquoise Majesty that I really don't shine enough light on. But two things come to mind is one is you gotta be honest with yourself about your childhood trauma. Yes. Yes. And a lot of us don't want to be honest about it because it involves Big Mama who we celebrate and herald uh, and, and honor. Come you know. on, girl. Or oh, it involve your daddy or your mama. Mm -hmm. And in our culture, you are not supposed to. Come on. It's only so much truth you can tell about mama. That's your <laughs> Come mama. On. Come on. Ah. It's only so much truthful shit you can tell about daddy because that's your daddy. And then you're dealing with your children and a lot of those things. 
they come up. And so we have to be honest with ourselves about our experiences. If your, if your mama shelter you and then prepare you for some of the things you uh, experience, then like, be honest with yourself. If your mama was abusive, verbally, mentally, uh, physically, emotionally, sexually, it happens. Be honest with yourself about your trauma, your childhood trauma, and then be willing to do something different to yes. heal it. Because what you've been doing apparently ain't working. Yes. So be open to different modalities of healing. And for me, it was spiritual bath. One day I decided I'm gonna take a spiritual bath. I'm gonna see what that what that be like. <laughs> and I had a vision of me in my childhood home. It was an apartment that me and my mom stayed in prior to her having my little brother. So at the time I was an only child. I had to be about nine or ten. And I wailed for her. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize just how much um, emotional trauma and how emotionally unavailable people were, the adults around me were, yeah. during that time and after. Yeah. Until I took that spiritual bath, had that vision, and I got out of that water feeling like I had a wet coat on me. You yeah. know, you got wet clothes and stuff yeah. on you feel heavy yeah. Yeah. I literally walked to my bedroom like a zombie I felt so heavy and my work from that point was to take off yes. all of that trauma yes. that I was carrying but when you mention spiritual bath to some people it's like oh you a witch <laughs> you a this you a that I'm a whatever the fuck it takes <laughs> <laughs> I'm whatever it takes to get that shit up off of me because yes. I now know awareness is everything. Yes. I now know that I am responsible for reparenting myself. Yes. So I can't sit up and be like, well, my mama didn't do this when yes. I was a child and my mama didn't do that. So that's why I show up in relationship with people like this and da 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 da. No, it's my responsibility now to reparent little Kia. Yeah. So I keep a picture of myself yes. around that age or younger yes. in front of me in my bedroom so that I'm always mindful of her. Yes. But we have to be open to uh, being innovative about our healing mm -hmm. and stop lying to ourselves about mm -hmm. the shit that went on in our childhood. Mm -hmm. yes. If Uncle Walter touched you, Uncle Walter touched you, boo. Yes. I hope I'm not triggering nobody. But again, awareness is where the healing starts. And so if you don't press it, repress that and push that down so far, how how are you gonna heal it? You gotta bring it up and face it. So I just wanted to add that to the conversation. I'm handing back off to Melo because she summons me. <laughs> <laughs> no, like thank you for sharing this, sis, because you just triggered something in my mind. Um, so I've been reading Bell Hooks, All About Love, and I feel like where I'm at right now in the book is perfect for where we are at right now. Um, so in the book, she was talking about her relationships with her family and how she confused love with care and affection and how she didn't realize until in her adulthood that she never received love. It was only care and affection, and that was the only thing that her family, her parents, were able to give her because that was the only thing that they were taught. Yes. And so we have this total like confusion of what love is, and also she reading this book has drilled into my mind that abuse and love cannot exist in the same space. Yeah. And so when we, if we take that into consideration then how many of us were ever in loving homes if abuse and love cannot coexist? Like that's just something to kind of think on. Um, and I already was going through my trials of my mother wounds and my daddy wounds and just everything and really just taking a step back and for one, humanizing my family. Yeah, yeah realizing that like okay y'all are my elders and y'all did have a job and responsibility to protect me and take care of me however i'm able to see y'all as humans and i'm able to extend you compassion and see that this is a cycle mm -hmm. for one um because that's what great grandma and granddaddy did to you and that's what their parents did to them so i'm able to humanize you but also 
although I'm able to humanize you, have empathy, that doesn't make what you did okay. Right. It doesn't make the abuse or your lack of empathy okay. Um, and just like accepting that and also accepting that like, you might have to cut your parents off for your peace, it for is. your health, it is. and that's okay as well. It's like not. It don't feel okay. And it's, it's tough, it's heavy, because people people say, like, how do you talk about your mama like that? How do you have a relationship? And I'm like, have you really just accepted the shit that went on in your life? Right. If you if you really said we did, then maybe you would have a different perspective. Or maybe if you just had a sneak peek of what my life looked like, then maybe you would, you know, see it a little bit easier. But I just realized, for one, that I cannot heal in the same place that I was hurt. And for two... I can't take somebody with me that don't want to go, that don't want to heal, you don't want to address your shit, and I'm doing all this internal work, and it's like, it's a conflict of interest, it, it, it's too much, and it, it's just not going to work, um, until the people who have caused the pain, the people that are at the root of the trauma, until they actually see that their behavior is a problem, and they decide to take accountability, but until then, like, if you have to walk away, that's all right do that if you have to escape do that save do yourself that. can i say one thing about the so I, I just wanted to piggyback on what miss keita said about uh you know reparenting your little self now at the end of the day the one thing that i have found out is that we become parents if you have children children are sent to you to teach you how to reparent yourself i don't know if i'm the only parent up here um am i I'm the only parent. I parent people. Okay. Well, I'm going to speak from a because I got four kids. I got four kids and two grandkids. All right. In 2020, my 14 year old daughter came to me and told me that she was, she thought she was pregnant. And I was like, okay. You know, I'm thinking, you know, we could still, mm -hmm. this is all right. This is, yeah. yeah. And then I asked her, all right, well, um, when was your last cycle? And she said, I, I don't know, I, I think March. We was headed into August. When I found out my 14 year old daughter was pregnant, she was six months pregnant. You have no idea what it feels like to sit in a doctor's office with a 14 year old who has not had any prenatal care and, and be a healthcare professional. And you have no idea what that feels like. But I never ever, cause see, I got pregnant at 17. Mind you, I've been a parent since I was nine. Okay, and I, you know, I'm a, that's why when they say be honest about, a lot of us got dealt cars we didn't want. I didn't have a childhood. I've been watching kids since I was nine years old. My baby is 14. So when I got hit with a grandbaby, the only thing I thought was, I'm never gonna get out of this shit. Okay, because listen, at the end of the day, I love my children. I love being a mother, but I fucking hate being a parent. You understand me? I hate that. And most people will look at you like, no. And my, I tell my children that they know because the parenting part is the bullshit. It's just like the job. Most of us don't hate our job. We love our job. It's the bullshit that you got to pay me for. Okay? So what I have what I have learned because I had to get my child through that. I was in school getting my bachelor's. My, my granddaughter was born November 29th, 2020, and I graduated December 10th. I have now, I, I literally almost lost my mind because at that moment, I was the single mother who had raised the kids with no child support, hadn't seen the ex-husband. You know, he just abandoned the kids. I had been working. I had been, my oldest daughter started talking about killing herself at nine. I used to have to set my alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to make sure she didn't hurt herself. All because they daddy. So I had to, so in the midst of me trying to help with all, trying to figure all of that out. And I, I had four kids by the time I was 24. I'm 39 years old. I've been raising kids for 30 years. And then for the first time in my life, I chose myself and your whole life falls apart. And you think, well, am I wrong for choosing myself? No, your children are sent here to show you the areas where you were lacking, where you didn't get what you needed, where you didn't get what you deserve. Now, mind you, I always say my children owe me nothing because they didn't ask to be here. They did not ask for that nigga not to wear a condom. And they did not ask for me to say it's cool, okay? 
So whatever it was that they went through, I have to accept part responsibility for that. I, I should have picked up. And I carried that for 20 years. And my oldest daughter is 21 years old. It wasn't until last year that my children, when I told my children, I can't do this no more, y'all. I, 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 I can't do it anymore. I was losing my mind. And my children said, Mama, we wish, for one, we wish you would stop blaming yourself. And then for two, live your life. Because your children, they watch what you do. They watch what you sacrifice. They might not necessarily care. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they're, 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 they're little egos. We're not mad at it. They're little bitty humans. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they all come with something to blow your goddamn life up. Okay? <laughs> they all come with something. But it's for a good reason. It's for a good reason. And if you parent them through it, you'll find that you're simultaneously parenting your inner child. Because the one thing that I do know is the the last age the, the age of your last big trauma is the age where you are emotionally stunted. You will constantly respond like the age of where your last trauma occurs. So it's a whole bunch of seven year olds, thirteen year olds, sixteen, nine, you take your pick. But until you reparent Lil Lil Kita, Lil Melo, Lil Sheena, Lil Everybody. You don't you don't get to move on you don't get to move through so my my advice is do the work now do the work now there were several opportunities where I could have stopped and said I'm not I'm not being true to me I'm not taking what serves me and I and because I didn't listen I was forced into that tower but I'm so grateful for it because the being that emerged when she said when she died when she said she died for some of us, it's a physical, it is a literal physical death. But when that spiritual death come through, that ego death come through, sometimes it'll make you pray for a physical death. It'll make you long for a physical death because it strips you of everything that you thought you were. I had no, baby, listen, whatever fronts I was putting up, when that little girl walked out with that, with that baby bump, and then a year later, she ganged up with my oldest daughter and they ended up, we, we all had to fight. We had to throw them things. It is what it is. And I had to put them out of my house. And then I ended up with the baby. Because they want to go, you know, do what they want to do. So I, I had to do all of it. But what I was very conscious of, and what I, what I was grateful for, is because I understood that my children were bleeding. My daughters were bleeding. That, that's a wound from 2000, March 6, 2009, when they daddy left. And I spent all that time trying to fix it, but I was never able to fix it. So they need to walk their path. They need to take, they need to learn their lessons. And my whole life, I was trying to stop their karma. So God made it to the point where I couldn't. I couldn't yeah, stop, I couldn't that, stop right? their lessons. You, right, you, this ain't your job. You told me that you trusted me with them children, so you gonna let me raise. And you don't get to question my raise. You stand as a resource, you stand in as a guide, and you, you, but you cannot do that. That's why, if you choose to let a life come through you, you better choose to do the work that it takes to say, to, to raise and to save. Because that's the only responsibility that you have to answer for. If that life, if that soul chose to come through your portal, you have a divine responsibility. And if you forfeit that responsibility by not doing the work, the personal work, woe unto you. <laughs> I just when you said that you, you told your kids you couldn't do it no more. I, I, I wanted to just like do cartwheels for Lil Sheena. There you go. Cause that was Lil Sheena saying to your mom, I can't do this. No more. No more. They got it. Right. <laughs> you right. got it. Right. Everybody got it. Right. You know? So one thing and I've told this to my own mom, so I don't want y'all to think I'm saying some some shit not practicing what I preach. I said this to my own mom about my sibling. Yeah, he your child. Cause when you're, you and your kid going through something, you that's my child, I'm a mama. You don't know what it mean to be a mama. I said, mama, more than him being your child, he God's child. Yes. Mm. And until you tap in with how God wants you to handle this yes. situation, instead of standing on business cause you his mama. Right, <laughs> right. Cause we abuse it. Yeah. We abuse it. We abuse it. 
be there's an ego death that comes yes. with that. Yes. Because there's an ego and a power trip yes. that comes with being a parent. Parent, you better speak. You know? So that's something to be mindful of when we are being honest with ourselves yes. about our relationships with our parents and how we're needing to honor ourselves and move forward. We do have one more question and then I'm going to open the floor for um, Q&A in case you've gotten some questions along the way. Because uh, at the end of the day, this ain't no place we rent. This is my motherfucking house. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got to rush off nowhere. So this last question is Ashley for Sheena. You could have kept the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it says, what's the most challenging thing about holistic healing? Oh, and after this one, I just want us each or you all each to share your holistic care kind of regimen or tips that you want to to share with people about what you do personally for holistic care. Uh, my biggest challenge to date is us. Okay. Because <laughs> we hard. Real bad. Okay. Um, so my biggest challenge to date has just been trying to overcome the trust that black people have in the healthcare system. Because again, it's easier to convince somebody that they're being, it's, it's easier to scam somebody than it is to convince them that they're being scammed. Scam. And I, you know, so I had to change my, uh, my model a little bit um, because when you've, been going to, when you've been going to your doctor for so long, you trust your doctor, right? Well, at least you, you convinced yourself that you do. Because you'll go back home and say, this shit ain't doing nothing. They just tell me the same thing every time I come. But you keep going back. Mm -hmm. You keep going back. So I was talking to somebody and she said, you're going to have to... She said, everything that you say sounds good. She said, the information that you... It sounds good. She said, I looked up a whole bunch of stuff you said and you are absolutely right. She said, that's not the problem. The problem is how are you going to get them to trust you versus their doctor. The only thing that I can do is give you the information. I can give you the information and the rest is up to you. That's what I had to let go of trying to find, you know, my target audience and stuff like that. The bottom line is whoever I'm, whoever, my people are my people. You know what I'm saying? So, um, my biggest challenge right now is trust. I did an event last night and I mean yesterday and majority of the the people there were conventional practitioners. You know what I'm saying? It was the major hospitals and all of that. And so I had huge imposter syndrome. Never mind the fact that I got two degrees, was working on a third, I have, been, I have several certifications, been all kinds of champions for different services, you know, all of that. It didn't matter. What mattered at that moment was, oh, I'm not rocking with the home team no more and they got more, you know, they got more, more, more manpower than me. But, you know, I feel like if you can't stand in the room with your ops, then you ain't about that life. And I've been about that life. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is because you can't take nothing from me. Because what I'm going to do is take these 14 years that, that y'all got. Because that's the only thing. I'm telling you, if I would have known then what I know now, there's no way I would have went into healthcare. There's no way. And that was a very, very hard pill for me to swallow. Because the only thing that I've ever wanted to do was help people. But then when you find out that the two that that the tools that they've been giving you to help is actually some bullshit and you ain't you you you've actually been contributing to the problem, that's a huge amount of responsibility to take on. Now I've had, you know, I've had good I've had I, some damn good times. You know what I'm saying? As a nurse, I know that I have helped people, but it was the wrong kind of help. And sometimes when you don't know better, when you don't know what you have access to, when you don't know what resources are available to you, when you don't know that there's... A lot of people think herbalism, crystals, reiki, they think all that shit is crazy. They think it's some woo-woo, witchcraft, <laughs> your cheese and slit off your cracker. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, so you telling me that this rock around your neck finna kill, you know, your back pain. Yes. Like God didn't make the rock. Exactly. So a lot of, what a lot of people don't realize, and normally, so normally the way that I overcome my obstacles, I'm gonna give you back your information. I'm gonna give you back your information because the science is undeniable. So I always have people in the direction of two, two documentaries, what the hell and how not to die. You watch those two, there's no way you can argue with me. 
the science has to make sense. And listen, there is literal, there is science. Because you know when COVID was going on, everybody kept saying, trust the research. Trust the science. <laughs> you were the science. Right, you were the research. You were the research. That's why the CDC don't want to release nothing for 75 years, because by the time it comes out, everybody who got by it is going to be dead. Okay? So I give you back your own information. And I actually, like, when people tell me, you know, I, you know, I had blood pressure, high blood pressure falling. So I say, how long you been on medicine? I met a woman yesterday. She said, I've been on medicine for seven years. I said, if a man told you every day, I'm going to marry you at 5 o'clock. Every day. My Sunday through Saturday. How long are you gonna sit and listen to this shit? <laughs> now I trust getting that. Granted, there are some people that's gonna do that, okay. and they find out about twenty years too late that this nigga ain't gonna marry. Me. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, you know, wow. <laughs> you know. So my thing is, if I if I could just get, I meet people where they are. So on my social media, I'm Sister Roots all over on Facebook. I'm your favorite root worker. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. But so what I do is I give you the information. I do a whole lot of educational videos because a lot of people, the one thing that I found is a huge knowledge deficit in our community. We got that, that scripture that says my people perish for a lack of knowledge, from a lack of knowledge, that's, that's true. We lay in those hospital rooms and we die because we don't know what questions to ask. We don't know what information. We don't know. We don't. Okay, they told me I got high blood pressure. What that mean? Because if, if you can't tell me what your high blood pressure actually means, what is what's how it's actually working in your body? If you can't tell me how your diabetes is actually destroying your health, then you on the wrong treatment plan. Because if you did understand what was happening, you would understand that the medication that you keep going for monthly, it's never going to save your life. It's not designed to save your life. A lot of people don't know that herbalism, that's the first form of medicine. There's science on energy uh, healing. There is your, your energy meridians and your chakras can be viewed through MRI. Energy frequency throughout the body. So your heart generates an electrical impulse. It's energy when they do an EKG. So why would you not believe in Reiki? You know what I'm saying? So you telling me that this Levada law can cure my heart, but Mommy Moon can't? That's a problem for me. You know what I'm saying? So I, what I'm doing is I'm giving our people the knowledge. And, and don't get me wrong. You know, I, I do welcome other. I do have some clients who are not people of color. Um, and I welcome them. I'm not mad at them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the end of the day, it's my people that's dying. It's my black woman that's 4.2 times more likely to die than any other black woman during the time when she's pregnant, while she's delivering, and after delivery. It's my black children who are seven times more likely to die from an asthma attack than any other child. It is my black children who have eczema eight times more than any other race. Did you know that your eczema medications that you rub on, on your children or your nieces and nephews, you know they link to skin cancer? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Did you mm. know that only 5% of cancers are actually genetic? Did you know that meat is a level one carcinogenic? Which means you will get cancer faster by eating meat than you will from smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. Did you know that your diabetes actually has nothing to do with sugar or carbs? Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that your toothpaste is actually the reason why you have such severe post nasal drip? Do you know that the reason why your cycles are so bad is because you love milk or ice cream or candles or, or, or body sprays? <laughs> the stuff, it's killing us every day. So, my biggest weapon against my obstacles is the only thing that I got left over from being a nurse my knowledge. So, as far as what I do, um, like I said, I teach you how to take that control of your health. I show you how to reverse long-term health conditions. The, the one thing that I need for people to know is conditions like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, even type 1 diabetes. Because type 1 diabetics, they'll tell you that you're born with. That's a lie. No baby has ever been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. It's always after the age of like 3, which means it's, contributed, it's attributed to your diet. That pancreas was, it was working when it got here. Okay, so what I do is I try and help people take control back over their lives. 
you don't understand that in the 1950s, Rockefeller bought your health care system and your school system. And he changed everything. Every medication that you go to CVS, Walgreens, or Walmart to pick up comes from a plant. They locate the plant, they isolate the specific property that addresses the problem, they take a petroleum base and they turn it into a medication. Every day that you pop a pill, you are taking petroleum. And you know why you're taking petroleum? Because Rockefeller was a petroleum heir. I mean, he was, he was what, what do you call him? Uh, the, the one that's so big, the, what, what you call him? Engineer. No, the ones that, that they own everything. The con not a conglomerate. It's the, it's, it starts with an M. I can't think right. Monopoly. Yeah, he owned all of it. So he needed to figure out how to make it feasible. Yeah. So he took every, petroleum jelly, your Vaseline. Yes. It's, in the game. it's oh, all chemical. It's all chemical. They found all the kinds of ways that they can do it. Mm -hmm. your, did you know Impossible Meat? Three ingredients off from dog food, from dry dog food. Mm -hmm. <gasps> <No>. <laughs> huh? So, as I, <laughs> so I always say start with the documentaries. Start with the documentaries um, and then start learning about your food. Honestly, you don't even have to learn about your food. Just know that it's all bad. Yeah. Okay? It's all bad. Don't question nothing else. When you go to the grocery store, stay on the outside. Let me hop in right here. Let me get some of that. <laughs> stay on the outside. <laughs> on the outside aisles. The inside yeah, is what you're going to buy that ponytail right <laughs> I just wanted to hop in right because it's when she's talking about this petroleum and the zillions of ways to use it. Yes. Zillions of products to see them. I personally learned about it and when I was in college, college in school many moons ago. And we were learning about how so many products are petroleum based. Yeah. And my teacher was like, and, and unbeknownst to me at the time, she was highly spiritual. Uh huh. She was, <laughs> she was once upon a time into dark magic, which I ain't not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes but you gotta work the left hand. She knew her. She, you know what I mean? <laughs> she knew her stuff. Um, and but she said, you don't put nothing on your scalp that you wouldn't put on your face yes. and you don't put nothing on your body that you wouldn't put on your face mm -hmm. and as a culture y'all know we be on that damn Vaseline yeah, yeah. culturally Vaseline slap that shit on your kids for Sunday, for Sunday school or for church or, we always use Vaseline but that's, a, that's another thing about that childhood trauma and being honest mm -hmm. with ourselves about those aspects that were not good, that were dangerous, that we now know are unhealthy, and stop using the excuse of how culturally ingrained it is. Right. My people use it. Right, because that's not an excuse. It was also drying your people's skin out and clogging their pores. Yep. So we do have to really be mindful of um, those ingredients and, and do our homework. And, and that's why I'm giving out these free books. So if you haven't grabbed a book, make sure you grab uh, one of those free books if you don't want it for yourself or don't see something for yourself get one for somebody else get them at my house thank you my holistic care so I do make myself teas I do make my own yummy things. Um, and I don't have a yummy pot. I like to be on my wild woman shit and I like get a pot from the kitchen. And I go sit outside <laughs> underneath the sun over my yummy steam. Um, I would say that I am more newer to the holistic side. Um, but I do like to bake in the sun allow the sun to drain me to detox my body to sweat out everything um i would say that like eating just caused me so much like anxiety uh so i ain't gonna lie i just eat now just because like i don't want to die <laughs> but when you become spiritual you lose your connection with food. yes yes you lose, you lose um it. so even my fruit is like y'all know a lot of fruit ain't real right like y'all know the fruit with the seed without the seed that ain't no fruit so it's like i'm really just kind of scared to eat so i do a, a intermediate fasting um and sometimes i just won't eat at all i try to drink 
as much water as I can. But at the same time, you can't trust the water either. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, I think now I just try to intake less on all scales. Uh, I try to intake less on my phone, the TV, less people, uh, less food. And I try to, whatever is in me, I try to detox. So if detoxing is just me sitting in my room, ignoring the people in my house or my phone, that's holistic care for me. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. Like I, 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 I don't like to do too much. Um, so yeah. I know for me, I always start by taking my time. I don't do well rushing. It just, it pisses me off. So I have to, I have to literally take my time. Um, I love being in the sun. Every time I wake up, get my coffee, I have one in my yoga mat. I'm always in my backyard. That's my happy place. I garden. I love to garden yes. each and every day. Quiet time. I'm pulled in a lot of directions from a business owner to having properties I have to go look and <laughs> check on, to being in school, having a social life, taking care of me. I'm so pulled, so silent. This time I'll just pull up at my house, I just sit in my truck. Yes. Just silent. Yes. So I put my earbuds <laughs> in with no music mm -hmm. so I can hear my thoughts mm -hmm. to know what I need to do without, without stressing myself out. I've dealt with um, acid reflux for years, but every time I used to go to the doctor, they kept putting me on medication. Like, okay, you're healthy, you're young, it, just just eat healthy. Yeah. But I always eat pretty clean. Um, like I said, I'm from Arkansas. My family, we eat everything fried. You pull up at our house, you see my dad with a shotgun killing squirrels to cook squirrels. Like, it's oh just a gosh. thing. <laughs> I grew up hunting, surprisingly, and fishing. Um, but a lot of what they eat and even I try to teach them, they look at it like I'm the crazy one for wanting to, hey, let's have some grilled chicken yeah. and some vegetables. What do you mean grilled? Why can't we be fried? <laughs> cut the iced tea. What do you mean cut the iced tea? My, oh, my daddy told me. He told me, I, he was like, but you use water to make iced tea. So what's the difference? I said, you know what? I can't argue with you, but you also add the sugar and the other stuff too. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. But, um, but really, what, what you eat, what really cured my acid reflex is that, I, like, it took three years. They just couldn't figure out what was wrong. I had these procedures, like, everything is fine. Stress. But stress, I start addressing my true self. Yep. Because if you've been in environments, pretty much my whole life, people have taught me what to be. And I have been forced to grow up when I was seven. I have to take care of myself. My mom went through a deep depression. Yeah. So from seven to like 32, I've pretty much just been in survivor mode my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to relearn foods. What foods do I like? What type of texture? A lot of people don't think about that. What yeah. textures do you like? There's all these recipes, but even with vegetables. Like, how do you like your vegetables cooked? What do you use? People don't think about that, but that mm -hmm. makes a, a huge difference. Water. Mm -hmm. yep. If you don't drink like water, but you have a cup to keep your water cold, more likely you're going to drink it. Yeah. Especially if you like a cup versus yeah. a bottle, <laughs> it's going to get hot. Who wants to drink hot water on a hot day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But tweaking those things, learning what you like. TikTok, you coming through with the recipes. <laughs> but just learn you. There's all these fads and trends, but they don't work for everybody. But you really have to learn yourself, your routine, what works for you. I love Chinese medicine. Um, I love my fresh herbs. That's, that's always been my thing, my oils and stuff. I'm very big into skincare. I have a whole routine. I'm like, don't interrupt my routine. <laughs> don't answer the phone. But just listen to, to what you need each and every day. That's what I do, is just silence so I can hear myself. I just wanted to encourage everybody, at the end of the day, just know yourself. Like when they kept hollering, knowledge yourself, back in the 80s and the 90s, we didn't understand, I don't think we really understood that. I don't think it hit like it needed to hit, you know what I'm saying? Like. Now I look at, I listen to KRS-One. I get what David Banner was saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, you understand that the silly shit that you've been 
program to pay attention to your whole life. But what the one thing that I would tell people, because that was the one thing for me, like back in June of 2021, um, I had just gotten into it. You know, I just had the whole issue with my daughters and I was dead drunk with my family into it. So at that point I was beefing with my family. You know, my whole family, my whole security system. Everything that I thought, the people who I had taken care of, the ones, I was the pit bull, I was, I was whatever you need, it didn't matter. It didn't matter, I was there. I'm fixing problems, I'm taking care, I'm, I'm, I'm handling it all. Cause I made all of them agreements. Olivia Pope. I made, yeah, I made all of them agreements. And then everything gets stripped and it's just like, and now you gotta look at yourself. And the, the, the number one reason why majority of people won't do the work is because you fully understand, you know deep down inside that if you really did the work, you finna lose a lot of shit. The people who you think you wanna be with, that's why I say I, I, I can't be mad at my husband. To some degree I can't be. Because, you know, to some degree I, I just right. can. Because being, you know, rightfully so, I get it. Like I told him, I'm not mad. You made an agreement with a woman who told you you didn't have to pay no bills. She just not here no more. So I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is it's what it is. I you, you, you lived good. We had fun. Mm. You know, we did. But, but the thing about it is I was forced to look at myself. And what I realized is I had no clue who I was. I, had, I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know who I was. And that terrified me. That terrified me because, like I said, my children are almost grown. All of them almost grown. What, what, what was I getting ready to do? Cause see, now I ain't got nobody else's problems to fix. I ain't got nobody else's messes to clean up. You know what I'm saying? But then I realized I never wanted to clean y'all messes up anyway. I didn't want to fix your problems. I got forced into the, this position. And you have to be careful about penalizing people for agreements that you made. So when shit starts falling apart, when you decide to be true to yourself, cause it's either gonna be now you know, some people this this panel triggered it, and I triggered it, and I thank Miss Keita for doing that because we need to know. So some people they ain't gonna be able to shape what they heard today. Other people gonna go home and not think nothing else about. It. I'm not mad at that. But one day you gonna have to face yourself. You are going to have to face yourself. And if you can live, I take a so I I'm I'm been drawn to Kemet now. So I. Every day I try and recite the 42 laws of my heart because Kim, Kim, it helps you understand that every day is judgment day. We're not waiting for no damn judgment day so for right. somebody to come crack the sky and tell right. us all our wrongs. Every day is judgment day. Right. So every day you take accountability of yourself in the morning and then you take accountability of yourself at night. You look at all of the arrangements that you've made with the people around you. Are you satisfied with those arrangements? Because at the end, with the agreements, because I'm, 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 I've read the four agreements. That's that's one book where you really everybody mm -hmm. needs to read it. The four, it's on YouTube for free. Yes, no audio. the four look. agreements. Uh, Eckhart Tolle, get into him. Okay, Power but, now. yes, a, a new, earth, new earth. All of that. Like when you start, when you really, really start soul searching, when you really clean that shit up, when you really got to go look in the mirror. Because a lot of people don't want to do that. I used to go to school. In order, in order to avoid me. That's how I ended up with all of them certifications and stuff. <laughs> oh, we're not going to do this right now. What program can I enroll in? I ain't got no problem with that, you know what I'm saying? I was smart and just as broken as I wanted to be. Okay? So I just, I, I if today was the last day, if, if you knew that when we pull out of South Haven, it's over with. It's over with. You, they've already told you, 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 you dying. This evening. At eight o'clock tonight are you cool with that you cool with your agreements you cool with what your life look like you cool with what people can say about you are you cool with what you did how you spent your time how you spent how you loved on people what you left because see here's the gag not only do you die at eight o'clock tonight somebody else gotta write your obituary and not your family if you cool with that if you know I'm straight and carry on but if you can't leave here and look yourself in the mirror tonight and say I'm straight 
with every decision that I've made, with every choice that I made, with what I got going on in my life right now, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, stop ignoring it. Because you gotta face it. One day on the, and either you gonna do it voluntarily or involuntarily. And I'm telling you, you don't want it involuntarily. She had a car accident. I was literally sitting in my backyard and I said, you know what? That's it, I'm done. I'm done, I'm finna kill myself. I'm done. I, I don't want to do this shit. Been hard since I got here, and you may, and now I got a baby and I, a, a, a grandbaby. I got kids out in the street acting the fool. I got my husband looking at me talking about he needs some money. You know what I'm saying? It's just like what the hell has happened? And I said it's always that was that was it for me. It's always going to be like this. There's a movie that I love. It's called As Good as It Gets. It's got Helen Hunt, Jack Nicholson, and I can't think of the other guy, but I love that movie. But there's a scene in it where he bursts into his therapist's office, and the therapist refuses to see him. But as he's walking, as he's getting put out, there's a waiting room full of people. And he stops, and he says, what if this is as good as it gets? And if you're cool with that, I'm cool. I just know at that point in my life, I wasn't cool with it. I, I didn't want my life, the, the fear of my life and me continuing of, of being who I was, that shit was more scary than, 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 walk, than changing course. And I, I, I will happily run in the direction of choosing me. So what all I'm saying is a lot, most of the agreements that we've made don't benefit us. Majority of the stuff that you do every day in your life is not for you. It's not even shit that you really want to do. So um, when you look at, you know, everybody be like at age 50, or you halfway over the hump? Nah, baby, average lifespan is 75. That means at 30, 33, you're at midlife. You're at mid, you don't have as much time as you think you have, especially if you haven't been eating right. Mm. I'm the same age my daddy was when he walked into his office, when he, my daddy was a nurse. My mama's a nurse, my dad was a nurse, I'm a nurse, my sister's a nurse. My brother was supposed to be a nurse, but when he saw how stressed he was, he said, fuck that, and he became a cop. Not like it's any better, but still. My daddy walked into the home health agency that he worked for and told him that he had the worst headache of his life, and two seconds later, he was on the floor. A blood vessel had ruptured in his head. And I spent three and a half years watching that man waste the weight in nursing homes. 39 years, I am the same age that man was laying in the nursing home with a tracheostomy, a feeding tube. By the time my father died, he had no butt because all of the, it was just a huge bed sore. It, all of the skin was completely gone. You could see straight through to both of his hip bones. That's what made me become a nurse. But shouldn't nobody die like that? <coughs> Things like that happen because somebody didn't do their job. Bed sores and people not being able to unbend their arms and they let, like you got old family members that you go see in nursing homes and shit like that that's not that doesn't just happen because they're old and they're sick they happen because somebody didn't do their job there's no way that my daddy should have died a bag of infection when my daddy died his temple was 107 because he had that much infection in his body so that set me off as a nine-year-old he died when i was he died nine days before my 12th birthday but from nine to 12 i watched that you know what i'm saying and when I realized that I'm 39 and he was 39, it's real sobering when you think about your own mortality. You don't, ain't shit guaranteed. I was a hospice nurse for three years. I had one patient who was on the phone with her daughter, walked to the car from a doctor's appointment, got in the car, didn't even get her other leg in the car. And she died right there in the parking lot. Phone in the hand, one leg out the door, one leg in the car. And the daughter just kept saying, I just talked to her. This shit ain't guaranteed, it ain't promised. Get your health together, get your mind together, and live your life for you. I'm done talking. Sisterroots.com. <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. <laughs> Get in.
Thank you. Thank you for being here. Be ready to be on the next one. <laughs> when I got the um, download, the channeling, this was not my idea. This was like straight through the crown chakra down to the third eye and out my mouth. And I just started making calls and sending some messages. Um, to do this, ultimately, I was all for it because I wanted to provide a platform for people who I know are doing awesome things in the community, awesome things out on these social media streets and to provide the platform for them to be able to reach more people and to have real authentic raw conversations yes. and as y'all can see i got three dynamic capable straight shooters that were able to give you the information and not like you said sugarcoat it or you know what i'm saying and and give you their honest uh feedback so now you have at least three <laughs> Y'all are our resources too. Yes. But you got at least three people you know. If y'all ain't been talking to each other, that you can call on for their advice, their expertise, their services, their support in some way. And they provide a myriad of modalities of um, support. And so do I. I don't want to make this about me. None of this was about me i just wanted to be able to provide the space for y'all to do what y'all do best and we're going to do it more yeah so if that is all of the questions if anybody wants to come up and promote their business you're welcome to use the time to do that shop with each other i'm gonna cut the music back on i appreciate you ladies i did not introduce y'all <laughs> in a formal way but i knew you were going to introduce yourselves and that is why I wanted you to also provide, uh, wanted to provide you the space where people can come to you individually and talk to you and get to know you. So we have Miss Jessica Bush here, Miss Sheena Butler, and Melo, aka Angel of Alchemy. Thank y'all so much for answering the call. And thank y'all for helping me bring this together. I got my one of my sponsors in the building with uh, Rodell Gray with uh, GXB Global. Thank y'all for all y'all support, everybody that helped me put this together. If y'all ever need my support in any way, y'all make sure y'all call me. And shout out to Miss Peter for setting this thing up. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me.